Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you, and this time I'm talking the movie Venom. Um, now, this movie did come out quite a while back, uh, several weeks ago in the States, but I live in Japan where usually it takes movies a little extra time to come out. Uh, I went and saw the movie today, um, two days after it came out here in Japan. Uh, the day it came out, I was working, and then the next day I was actually uh, going on a little trips. But anyway, I made my way over to the theater, and one of the nice things about movie theaters in Japan is they always have, they seem to have, usually have a little shop area in the lobby where you can go and buy goodies from the movie. Um, for They still have like a whole bunch of like Avengers stuff left over for, from, I guess, Infinity War. There was some Venom stuff. Uh, but nothing that was particularly exciting. Uh, they had a cute Venom-shaped coin purse and some stickers and some clear files, but nothing that I really felt the need to pick up. Um, anyway, kind of getting right into things. All in all, this movie, I had a good time with this movie. Um, was kind of bashed by the critics, and a lot of the people who... who um, reviewed the movie, the fans, have said, like, look, it's not a terrible movie, but it's an enjoyable movie. It, you know, it's a, it's a decent way to kill a couple hours. There's some fun moments, uh, but there are also some flaws with it. And honestly, yeah, it, it's kind of a, it's ultimately kind of a silly movie that, as people have pointed out, it seems like something that would have maybe came out, like, just the type of storytelling would have seems very in keeping with sort of what we would got from mo a lot of movies from the 90s. And, you know, that's fair. But it is a fun movie. It's generally pretty in keeping with the lore of Venom, minus, of course, Spider-Man. And uh, I wasn't too worried that they wouldn't be able to make this movie work without Spider-Man. I mean, the last time we got Venom on screen was not so great so i'm glad they were able to take this movie have a lot of fun with it and it turned out to be pretty pretty fun i really enjoyed uh enjoyed it um so let's kind of get right into some of the more detailed things of it um tom hardy i mean yeah he he really pulls it all off i mean everything in this movie rides on him he's eddie brock he's also provided the voice of venom and um he really just goes to town with this movie. I mean, you, you can tell Tom Hardy was having a pretty fun fun time with this movie. And, oh yeah, there, there are going to be some spoilers in this. So if you're not interested in that, I think I've already established my feeling about the movie. So I'm going to give you a five count and then we're going to move on. I'm not going to get super heavy with the spoilers, but... Okay, so uh, speaking of Tom Hardy having fun, I was just reading about the movie earlier before I did this review. And I mentioned like that bit where he climbs into the lobster tank. Apparently that's something that Hardy just improvised on the set, which is like, oh man, that, that's that's brilliant. <laughs> that's just like just like, oh yeah, that that was great. That that whole scene there was uh, pretty, pretty hilarious. Um and I really did like what they did with what Hardy did with the character for the most part. Um there were definitely a few moments where I'm like dude, could you at least comb your hair a little bit? And yeah, um, so Hardy sort of talking to himself and uh, you know, seeming really discombobulated. I mean, that did get a little tiresome over time, but again, that was a minor thing. And to be fair, this is a movie about a guy who suddenly finds himself sharing a body with an alien symbiote uh, all these murderous impulses and basically hearing voices in his head. So yeah, of course it's going to seem um, a little bit like somebody suffering from some kind of a mental illness. I mean, people have kind of pointed out in a way you can sort of read Venom as a parallel for schizophrenia. I'm not going to get into that, but um, definitely there are there is certainly that aspect to it all. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of the really fun things that were there in uh, Venom were the things that made uh, uh, the comics really fun. Um, I mean, Venom has a fondness for violence. Uh, eating brains, Venom loves to eat brains. Venom also likes chocolate. Uh, there's, and it's established in the comics there's a chemical that's found in human brains 
It is also found in chocolate that the, the symbiotes need to survive. Um, sort of coming to an understanding that, okay, uh, I'll use these powers to only hurt bad people. I mean, Venom originally started out as just a straight villain whose whole thing in life was, I want to eat Spider-Man's brain because I hate Peter Parker. But the character proved incredibly popular, and he was one of those first characters back in the rough days of the 90s where they tried to take somebody who was genuinely a very cool villain, but because they were so popular, they had to try and turn him into some sort of anti-hero because sales. Not to be completely fair, Venom is one of the characters that did manage to more or less pull that off. Not completely, but he's certainly fair, one of the characters that fared the best under this uh, whole situation. And God only knows there were so many characters after him who just were not able to pull that off. I mean, that's been tried a couple of times with Sabretooth from uh, X-Men, for example. Uh, yeah. No. Mystique, I could kind of maybe see that at times, but again, she's sort of like, well, I'm going to try and reform now. Like, ah, now I'm going to go back to being a heartless murderer. So I've kind of given up on her. Uh, but anyway, uh, I really did like, generally speaking, the CGI for Venom. I mean, he comes across as immensely creepy. And I do like how in the initial thing, uh, Venom is basically like, yeah, you're my ride, uh, and if you know you play your cards right, maybe after my the aliens, my fellow alien symbiotes come to Earth and eat most everybody, you'll still be left alive. And I kind of wish they'd sort of toyed around with that a little bit more. Uh, Venom has a very abrupt change of heart, and you know Eddie is sort of like now hey wait a minute you were talking about like bringing your people here and basically devouring most of humanity why should why in the world would I trust you I mean that does kind of seem like something he should have focused on a little bit more uh, especially with the whole it's like in a way he's almost Venom has almost enslaved him in a way and yet this all gets glossed over very quickly but okay um, there are definitely some like some moments where uh, it's really also seemed like people were just giving away like way way too much information to people they really didn't have a good reason to. Uh, but anyway, well, let's let's dial it back for a moment and get a little more focus back on track. Um, I did kind of like how Venom says like yeah, kind of among my own people, I was something of a loser like you, Eddie. I don't want the other symbiotes to come here. If it's just me on this planet, then I'm pretty much the biggest, baddest thing around. Which is kind of an interesting motivation. He basically just wants to be the big fish in the small pond. And I, I kind of like that. I think it's sort of an interesting motivation. It's a little different. Um, it's also kind of interesting to see how Venom sort of starts picking up a little bit of uh, you know, more personality, like encouraging Eddie to uh, try and fix his relationship with Annie. Uh, of course, she also proved to be a suitable host for whatever reason, so don't don't trust the Venom completely. Um, we also got to see like the female Venom, which was pulled off really well. Um, the main bad guy of this movie was frankly pretty uninteresting. In this. Sort of just like he's just evil Elon Musk is really all they could go with. I mean, it was just like, ugh. Uh, Riot is a character from the comics, but not someone I know particularly well. Um, uh, honestly, bad guy-wise, there needs to be a bad guy in the movie. And it's all, it's, it's all really boring and fairly paint by numbers, so I wasn't really impressed there. Uh, also, am I the only one who thought it would be completely abs it was utterly absurd that there is basically a rocket launch, a launchable space rocket, built just off to the side of San Francisco slash Oakland. I mean, seriously, you're not going to be launching vehicles into space from, like, literally right outside a major U.S. city. One reason, of course, being if something goes wrong with that, as we saw in the beginning of the movie, you don't freaking want a spacecraft crashing into the middle of a major urban area. 
I mean, I've been to Cape Canaveral. It's a good ways from any of the big cities in Florida. And why in the world would you want to try and launch a craft into space from San Francisco? Now, to be completely fair, NASA does have a base in California. I don't remember exactly where it is, but I'm pretty sure it's in California. And it's intended for use as an emergency landing site for the space shuttles. Now, stop and think for a minute. Where are the other major NASA facilities in the US? Well, they're in Florida and Houston. Do you, do you know why Florida was chosen as really kind of the hub for so much of this NASA stuff? Because um, for a bunch of sciencey reasons, the easiest places to, the easiest place to send stuff, vehicles from Earth into space, is from around the equator. And Florida is about as close as we can get in the continental United States to the equator. I mean, we have some, I mean, like, yeah, okay, the U.S. Virgin Islands are closer, but if you put it in Florida, then you can just, you know, stick supplies you need on a truck and drive it there. It's a lot more convenient. <clears throat> you know, it's for, yeah, so... Yeah, the whole thing idea of like really you you basically have a, a spacecraft launchable from right outside San Francisco that's utterly ridiculous. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just kind of kind of kind of go with things. Uh, let's see what else, what else, what else. Uh, I did like that uh, they took the time to make uh, the new boyfriend Dan. Uh, into a decent guy. They didn't try and do something cheap, like have him be a total ass. I hate when stories do that. When somebody is like broken up with a, one of the main character, the hero, or the heroine, or whatever, they start some dating somebody else, and that person is like a complete and utter tool with no redeeming features whatsoever. It just goes to. Sh it just seems like, well, okay, wh wh what does it say about you know the person that, that got together with this jackass? That for some reason they thought that this this person was like a suitable partner. It, you're just creating this like shallow caricature of a person, just sort of, just to sort of highlight how great the person that they are destined to be with is. I mean, it's just cheap and shoddy writing. Here in the movie, Dan is a totally nice guy who, even though he uh, I mean, he never shows any real suspicion towards like, you know. His, his girlfriend's ex, he actually sticks up for Eddie and, or kind of, kind of puts basically kind of like, hey, hey, this guy's my patient when Eddie shows up at the restaurant and acts like a complete lunatic and is genuinely doing the very best he can to help Eddie. And Eddie, to his credit, understands this. He's a mature adult about it, especially for somebody who's dealing with some seriously heavy stuff. And he's extremely grateful to Dan. He realizes that Dan has every reason in the world to dislike him, and yet Dan is going out of his way to try and help him, and that, you know, Dan is genuinely, as a medical professional, concerned for his well-being. One thing I love in stories is when people act like mature adults about situations. Now, granted, nobody's perfect. We don't always act like mature adults about every single thing. All right. I mean, I'm not exactly a spring chicken, and I don't always act like a mature adult about every single thing. But I like to think that most of the time, I, I I use I use my head to deal with my problems. I think about things before I do it, and I try to afford other people the respect that I would offer any other thinking, intelligent adult. And yet, so much of uh, drama is based on just these wild emotional reactions completely devoid of logic and again sometimes that's just how people are and that's just how life plays out but hopefully that's not the go-to place for most people then again if we look at the state of the world and god help us all if you look at reddit you could be forgiven for thinking otherwise anyway also, kind of disappointed by the fight at the end of this, the film, and boy, oh boy, could some of that CGI have been better. Still, uh, definitely enjoyed the stinger. I mean, uh, 
Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy. Oh, hell yes. Kind of wish they could have found a better wig for him. It looks like uh, looks like he stole Carrot Top's haircut. But yeah, Venom sequel, I'm down for that. And uh, I'm going to call it here, guys. Uh, as always, please comment, rate, subscribe. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi, and also join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good one.